In this section, we're going to take a look at persistence and how persistence is affected by the additional resource record types introduced in Big IP version 12.0. So let's talk about persistence. There are some issues that can happen with persistence uh, that need to be considered. First of all, multiple answers can be provided to a WIP query, meaning, meaning that the, um, the number of items returned in the answer and the additional information is greater than one and persistence implies a single answer because we're going to try to respond to a particular LDNS with the same answer every time. So persistence may not work as customers expect it to if they have their big IPs, GTMs, configured to return more than one answer. We're gonna see that in some examples later. Also, you can look at the um, persistence records using the TMSH show GTM persist command. You can also zcat the slash config slash GTM LDNS.gz. Those are where the records are written to disk by the GTM. They're updated periodically, so you can take a look at that and see, see what records are there. You can also view the persistence records in the GUI. There's a path there um, by going to statistics, module statistics, DNS, GSLB, persistence records, or you can go to DNS, GSLB, wide IP statistics, persistence records. But note this, you must change ADB variable in order to get the GUI to display persistence records. That DB variable is ui.statistics.modulestatistics.dnsglb.persistentRecords, persistence records. That value needs to be set to true. You need to also note that it's off by default for a reason. You can cause some performance impacts to your machine um, if you enable this and you have a large number of persistence records to display. So use caution when enabling it. Let's look at a non-persistent configuration with minimal response disabled here, meaning the GTM is going to try to fill in as much of the additional and answer section as it can. And in this particular example, we have persistence disabled at the wide IP level. We have max answer, the maximum answers returned at the pool level set to two. We have persistence disabled. This is an MX um, type, so it's returning wide IPs. We have an A and a quad A where persistence is disabled on both of these. And for each of those, we're gonna get a max answers return equal to four. So if we run this query right here, this dig against that um, mail.example.com MX record, we're going to get back two answers. We get triple W132 and triple W129. That is, those are the two wide IPs that are contained within those A and quad A pools. And for each of those, it's go we're going to get back some A and quad A answers that fill, fill up the additional section. So the problem here is we can't persist on more than one value. Which of these values do we actually want to put in to the persistence table to make sure that um, the LDNS gets the same response every time. We just can't do it. There's too much information here and, in, and persistence is disabled. So let's go to the, so what we need to do is we have the max answers returned to two and max answers returned to four up here at the top. And we see that reflected down here. We can't persist because there's more than one value. So let's look at a, our example a little bit further and we'll, we'll make some changes to it as we go along. Um, up top, you see our original example that we had with persistence disabled everywhere and max answers returned equal to two and four. Now, if we look down at the bottom, we have persistence enabled at the, wide IP, at the MX wide IP level. We have max answers returned equal to one here and we have max answers returned equal to one here. So let's see what happens to our queries when we query um, with that configuration. Here we're doing our dig again, the exact same dig we did previously. I've got, I have uh, the diagram up here in the upper right for, um, for reference. The persistence is enabled here and it's disabled here. And we have max answers returned equal to one. So we're seeing that we got one answer in both query one and query two, we saw triple w128.example.com returned in both of those queries. Now in the additional section, you'll see that we had two answers returned. We said max, max answers returned equal to one. However, that triple w128.example.com has two different wide IPs, an A and a quad A. I collapsed those down into one to make this small graphic fit. But there's a triple W128A and a triple W 
128 quad A, and we're getting responses from both of those. We did get a single response for each one, which is what we want. However, we had persistence disabled here, so you'll notice that there's a one here and a one here, and when we go down here, we're going to two, two. So we're not, we're not persisting. We got a single answer for each of those for the A and the quad A, but we're not persisting because we have persistence disabled. So we have one level of persistence, but within the additional section, when we do the full resolution, we're not going to persist yet. So let's take, and let's take a look at what the persistence table looks like in this particular case. You can see here I use the TMSH show GTM persist command, and for 28.1.1 at the wide IP level for, for the MX type, for mail.example.com, we are going to um, persist to the pool member triple w128.example.com. So we had persistence enabled here, and we see a persistence record for that. We have persistence disabled here, so we see no further persistence records. So let's take this a, a one step farther, um, and let's do persistence enabled here, max answers return equal to one. We've now enabled persistence at the second wide IP level here, and we still have our max answers returned equal to one. And let's see what happens. So in this case, we're gonna do our dig again, and we're gonna get back that triple W128 in both cases. And you'll notice that in this case, these are staying the same also. So we have persistence at the wide IP, at the MX wide IP level, and then we enable that persistence at the um, secondary wide IP level. So all those wide IPs um, that, are pool, that were pool members of um, that MX pool, we're now persisting on those also. So you'll notice that the, the IP addresses are staying the same. Let's take a look at the persistence table. And now we can see that we have, once again, our 28.1.1, that MX, mail.example.com. This is the same that we saw previously but now we have two additional wide IP persistence entries here. And you'll notice we have one for type A and one for type quad A. They're still pointing to the same WIP name because they're the same WIP, they just have different types. And then we're pointing to specific pool members or specific um, members within those pools. So we have a vir virtual 128 IPv6 and a virtual 128 IPv4. So in order to get persistence to work, you need, if you want end-to-end -end persistence on a particular wide IP in this structure, you need to be sure and enable persistence all the way through and set your max answers returned equal to one so that, first of all, these persistence entries are created and with that max answers return, there's only one answer that is being placed in here so we don't, because we can't make a decision of what to persist on if we have more than one answer being given back.